Now, I planned, as I laid out this series, uh, over a month ago to preach on this text on this day. But in God's wise timing, I had no idea, of course, what would happen in Memphis over the last week and a half or so. In God's wise timing, it is a good word for us in Memphis today. I think we feel the weight of pain, violence, and wickedness around us. Many of us are fearful. But this text offers us a word of hope. It probably won't surprise you that I can't give you a 100% guarantee of safety and security in this life from this text of Scripture, or for that matter, any text of Scripture. But I can point you to the God that in the context of ancient Israel cared for those who trusted in him while they were literally and violently being attacked by a wicked and foreign power. I'm sure that some of the true believers in Israel died during those attacks. But this passage shows that all of God's children who die find an eternal home with their king where there is safety and security and joy and peace and freedom and rest forever. And before I dive into the passage, I want to remind you, Micah's prophecies came true. God's people, as he had said, eventually went into exile in Babylon. They lived in the midst of a foreign people, many of whom were hostile to them. Were they supposed to just hunker down and live in fear? Were they supposed to just hate the people around them? And Jeremiah, God actually tells them what to do while they're in that scary environment. We're pretty familiar with Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, you know, plans of a future and give you a future and a hope. But I want you to hear a few verses that are before that in the same chapter. Jeremiah 29, verses 4 through 7. It should be on the screen. This is what the Lord of armies, the God of Israel, says to all the exiles I deported from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat their produce. Find wives for yourselves and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters to men in marriage so that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there, do not decrease. Pursue the well-being of the city I have deported you to. Pray to the Lord on its behalf, for when it thrives, you will thrive. Now I know that it was unbelievably hard to go and live in Babylon. I, I can't imagine. But I mean, even before that happened, they experienced the, the deaths of friends and family members in, in battle before the Babylonians won the battle. And then once the battles were over, they were torn away from their homeland. You could try to put yourself in their shoes. Being torn away from your homeland, torn away from your family's inheritance, put on a long, forced march to a new land. Like, this isn't like a few miles. This is a new country you have to walk to. And they had to learn new customs, probably at least part of a new language. Under rulers... You have no vote with, you have no control over who your rulers are. A complete life upheaval, completely scary. And yet, God says, trust me. Live your life. Don't live in fear. He tells them, build your house. Eat of the fruit of your labors. Raise your kids. Multiply. Enjoy my blessings right where you are. I know we aren't Jews living in ancient Israel or in Babylon, but I think the principle and the mindset and the approach that God commands his people there to have is 100% applicable to us today. We are called to pursue the well-being of Memphis. Two years ago, I prayed that God would cause this place to feel like home and that he would do it soon. And God has graciously answered that prayer. I love this city. Can't we pursue the well-being of our city together? Instead of withdrawing, can't we dig in and seek to change our city? 
First, by praying to the Lord on its behalf, as Jeremiah told them. For when it thrives, we know we will thrive. And I mean really laboring together in prayer. But second, seeking to meet the deep hurts and the needs of our city, both with practical help and with the truth of the gospel. This is why we are involved with things like the Send Relief Ministry Center. This is why we work to, to be involved in our schools. I had a meeting this past week with the new principal at Cordova Middle School, and I thank God they want to continue our partnership. This is why we do ministry like our English is a second language. Brinkley Heights. This is why Pastor Jerson and I had a meeting this week on trying to bring a, a leader to start a Spanish-speaking congregation in a, a, as part of our church. And other community ministries, we want to seek the well-being of those who live around us for when they thrive, when our city thrives, we will thrive too. Let's be faithful to God's call in that. And let's be encouraged by Micah's hopeful vision. Chapter 4.